What is your name? One God beholds. What is your quest? To sew V9288 and get great tips before I begin. What is your favorite sewing tool? My tracing wheel. Congratulations, friends. You have made it to the last step in this sew along. Will you be finishing your capes today, or is your cape timber turning into cloaktober? Today, we're going to be finishing our capes by wrapping up all of the loose ends like hemlines, buttons, etc. And, like always, I'll be giving two sets of instructions, one set for everyone following the Vogue pattern verbatim, and one for those who are adding a lining to their cape. The first step of the color installation today is actually the last step from last video where we stay stitch the neckline. Picking up from there, we'll move on to step 22 where we'll take our interfaced collar backs, turn in the seam allowance along the neck edge, that's the edge that will be sewn onto the cape, and press it under. Once it's pressed, go ahead and trim the seam allowance down to one centimeter. Now that your seam allowance is pressed and trimmed, you're going to pin the collars together, right sides touching, and sew along three sides, leaving the neck edge open. Then you can trim the seam allowances, making sure to cut pretty close to your stitch line in the corners for nice crisp angles. Finally, turn the collar right side out and give it a good press. For the next step, we're all going to pin the unstabilized collar piece to the neck edge, clipping the seam allowance as necessary to get it to go around the curve. If you find that your collar seems too short, it's possible that the neckline of your cape has stretched out slightly in the assembly process, and you might have to run a line of gathering stitches right alongside your stay stitches in order to ease the fabric back into its desired length. And yes, please feel free to mock me for pad stitching the collar after having publicly announced that I wasn't going to. Make sure as you're pinning to keep the pressed edge of the interfaced collar free. Only pin the uninterfaced piece. Once you've pinned it on, you can choose whether you'd like to baste it or not. On a curved area like the collar, I generally like to take the extra minute or so to baste, plus here it's helping me to double check my pattern matching, but you can equally skip this step and jump right to the stitching if you wish. Go ahead and sew the collar on. Turn the edges and press that seam towards the collar. Now here we're going to have slightly different instructions depending on whether you have a lining or not. If you aren't using a lining, then you'll treat this collar the same way you did on the collar of the front panel, by slip stitching the pressed edge over the seam. And if you are using a lining, then you can sew the pressed edge directly onto your lining fabric, which I'd recommend doing by hand for a more invisible finish. But then again, I love hand sewing, so I may be biased. And the last step in our collar journey is to edge stitch the neck edge of the collar, just like we did on the front panel, although I decided to do this before sewing the inside collar to the lining, that way the stitches didn't show through onto the back side. So go ahead and take a moment to do that, and then let's meet back up here for some other finishing touches. Okay, so our capes are nearly done, but there are a few remaining steps. For me, I still needed to sew my belt into my front panel. Then, as you may have noticed, our hems are conspicuously unfinished, so let's take care of those. If you don't have a lining, you can follow Vogue's instructions, which are to turn the bottoms of the facing to the outside, so that the right sides of the fabric are touching, and then sew the facing along that bottom edge and trim the excess. This will allow you to turn your facing to the inside, and then you can finish the rest of your hemline by ironing the raw edge under twice and stitching it shut. If you have a lining layer, there are a ton of different ways to finish off your hem, but I'll show you how I'm doing mine. So I've shown you how I treated the hem up to this point. 
it's already pressed and stitched down in a certain way, and that's to allow me to finish the rest of it up by simply stitching the lining layer down on top of the fashion fabric. I'm making sure that every stitch passes through at least the lining layer and one of the layers of the fashion fabric underneath it, but every now and then I'm letting the thread pass through both layers of the fashion fabric to hold it extra well in place. If you're finishing your hems another way, let me know how and why in the comments. Then we can add our buttons, which should be fairly straightforward. I first had to go back and install my buttonholes, which I was unable to do back when we constructed the front panel. Now that my buttonholes are in, I can line up the front panel with the body of the cape, pin it in place, and use a chalk pen to mark the placement of my buttonholes, which, you'll remember, are slightly adjusted from the original pattern in order to avoid unsightly wrinkling when I wear my backpack. Then the buttons were stitched on, and if you're looking for a good refresher on how to sew buttons on, I went digging through the internet and I found this video to be particularly clear and useful, and she uses the toothpick technique, which is the method that I like to use as well, so I'll throw the link to that in the description. And then, lastly, while I have the needle and thread out, I'll be sewing the lining layer to the outer layer along those backpack straps, because as you can see right now, these holes are just a gateway into the inner guts of my cape, and that's rather unsightly. So settle in for a wee bit of hand sewing. You can put on your favorite podcast, a good Spotify playlist, or if you want to listen to somebody get really excited and babble on about the history and origins of the sports corset, I know a certain playlist that might serve you well. And once we've gotten our hand sewing all finished, it'll be time for the final reveal. So now that all the hand sewing is finally done, I wanted to take a moment before the final reveal to thank you all for joining me in this sew along. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how the whole process went, both on your end as well as my role in it. Did you like the way it was run or would you have preferred a more traditional classic approach to the sew along with less editing and more real time sewing? Was this helpful to you in aiding you to finish the project? Did you hit any unexpected snags, or was it all smooth sailing? How many times did you have to whip out your seam ripper? 
If this sew along was helpful to you and you would like to show your appreciation, there are a few different ways to do so. I have a coffee page where you can go leave me a one-time tip or buy me a coffee and anything donated there helps me to continue producing more and better quality videos. If that's not a feasible option for you, you can equally give the video a thumbs up or even more helpfully, share the channel with your friends and fellow historical fashion enthusiasts. Make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for more sewing content, starting with my reproduction of the house coat from The Lord of the Rings, which is the culmination of three months of sewing and filming using only fabrics that were found or donated by the community. And now, let's take a look at the fruit of all our labor. Music